second, the need for being versed in country things. Robert Frost's poem by that name is one of the most densely composed poems I know, one I cannot ever get out of my mind. Consider these two lines from the first stanza. Now the chimney was all of the house that stood like a pistol after the petals go. Frost has made petals of rhetorical figures in these two lines. By my count, these lines contain the following figures. Two instances of imagery, a simile, personification, synecdoche, irony, alliteration, assonance, consonance, and chiasmus neatly nested together, and these on top of a sonorous tetrameter and a quietly ironic inversion of syntax. <laughs> when I want to make a point to a student about lines and real poetic composition, these are my go-to lines. Frost manages a couple of wonders in this poem, the first of which has to do with the sound of the Phoebes. As they fly in and out of the barn windows, Frost observes their murmur is more like the sigh we sigh from too much dwelling on what has been. That phrase, the sigh we sigh, sounds very much like the common call of the bird. A pair of whistly, squeaky notes, usually repeated in murmur, like the pair of ions Frost provides. And what about that pump handle, conveniently left up as a place for the Phoebes to perch? What country thing is Frost implying by this apparently innocent detail? We have two possibilities. Either the well beneath the pump was empty, or the fire had simply spread too quickly, and some human working the pump left up the handle as an arm raised in surrender. The barn is empty, but the emptiness is more potent when we consider it symbolically. The spread out syntax of the poem conveys emptiness. Indeed, all the human materials of this poem, the chimney, the barn, the pump, and the fence post with its wire are now inverted, no longer symbols of abundance and vitality, but symbols of absence and negation. And yet the symbols of nature repurpose the symbols of man and sing. This poem is singing too. It's a ballad stanza, an old <coughs> country song Frost is humming or whistling to himself. The association between nature and the imagination is furthermore a fundamental feature of the English language. We do not say a country road is as crooked as a politician, though that may be the case, but that would be a different kind of crooked. It is more common in colloquial parlance to say the road is crooked as a dog's hind leg, an old time simile. If some sellable good is overly expensive, we say its price is higher than a cat's back, which is an idiomatic comparative. If somebody desires too much, we say he or she wants the moon, a trusty metaphor. When someone fails to see something obvious and overthinks a situation, we say that person cannot see the forest for the trees. These are old expressions, probably ancient, and border on being cliché, but there was a time when such expressions were fresh and vital. When someone is proud of having his mischief discovered, we say he was grinning like a possum. When someone is preening and unreliable and overly proud of himself, we call him a yard bird, that is, a rooster, sometimes also known as the cock of the walk. Sometimes, around here, known as Rodney Jones. <laughs> <laughs> so, 